This video is all about starting off in Hockey Ultimate Team. With milestones, challenges, and objectives, there's no better year to play Hockey Ultimate Team for the first time. This video will be catered to those kind of people and to those who are trying to get an early head start in Hockey Ultimate Team and they're being overwhelmed by what you could possibly do when you first start off. The game gives you a starter pack, everyone gets an alumni, and the NHL players and the logos and jerseys are based on your favorite team. The game generates a lineup for you and has you go through a tutorial that will answer probably a lot of your questions. You get a whole bunch of bronze, silver, and gold guys that are kind of just all over the place. The game sets them up based on rating, but something to keep in mind is your centers don't have great face-offs. Anyway, there's a lot of debate on whether or not HUT is a pay-to-win mode. That's partially true, but it's also partially not true. Skill will always be the biggest difference maker in these games. If you disagree, just check out my HUT Level Up series coming to a theater near you. But if you buy packs and feed into the system, you definitely do get an advantage because all those cards will just make it easier for you to score. It is possible to play Hockey Ultimate Team, to get to Division 1, win the league title, be successful in the competitive parts of this game mode without spending a single penny. Again, this year, they make it easier to get coins, but otherwise, you can always just play the market as I do in my 1K to 1M series, showing you guys how to flip cards and make millions in the auction house. Here we learn about the auto fill button. Thing to watch out for. New this year are the loan cards and it's automatically going to put them on your lineup because they're your best players. You only have them for a certain period of time, so you want to use those on games that matter. Whether it's playing an AI that you're struggling with, trying to get promoted in a division, trying to go for that title, or playing in the more competitive game modes such as competitive seasons and hut champions. Every eight hours you get a free pack with some coins, a contract, and a random player. Open these as much as possible because not only will opening a certain amount of them give you a legend for you to keep, but also these packs can contain some really good players. Honestly, don't know where this Lone Legend choice pack came from, but if you have it, well then you should definitely open it and choose the best player there. And again, save them like the other Lone players. These guys are likely going to be your best players for quite some time. You don't want to use them on some really easy games. Then we get into the objectives and milestones that I was talking about. You're going to want to do these as much as possible for the free coins. When you get through three sets of progression objectives, which are kind of like short goals set for you, you get unlock daily objectives, which are fairly easy and give you more opportunities for gold. These objectives and milestones are easily boostable in the hut challenges where you played your first game against the Vegas Golden Knights. So you can either go through all those challenges, which I would highly recommend, and we're going to talk about that in a second or you can set it up so that you're playing against like the easiest team on the easiest difficulty which is rookie and you can score like 20 goals a game and it's going to count towards those objectives and milestones to get you even more coins easily and some really good alumni and legend players up next we take a peek at all the challenges available to you outside of event challenges these challenges don't really award packs which was a great way of building your team in NHL 18 because there was a lot of packs given out for completing these challenges it's all about coins here we see the offline seasons going from division 8 to division 1 against the ai but really there's no reason to play against the tougher teams because the rewards are pretty much all the same like here at the very end of division 1 you get a gold pack but you have to play like 80 games to get here it's just not worth it Stick to playing against teams in like the WHL, OHL, AHL, and whatnot. Each of these games will give you about 2,000 coins, and those coins can be used to better your team from the auction house. Don't save up coins to buy packs because those packs cost a lot. You don't want to be left disappointed amassing all these coins and then opening up the pack and getting nothing. I mean, there's a chance to get like a Stamkos or a Crosby or something, which will go for a lot, but but it's a little too low. On the flip side, however, if you want to spend money in Hockey Ultimate Team, the best time to do it is within the first two weeks of release when the prices of these gold base cards are at their highest. For example, if I were to pull a bunch of 82 to 85 overall cards, that's great and all in the beginning, but at the end of the year, those cards are worth next to nothing. So it feels like the pull rates are very high early on because you'll actually get your money's worth out of the packs. Up next, I want to talk about this contracts pack. 20 contracts 
contracts for 8k in the first few months of the game don't worry about it that's an average of 400 coins per contract but going into the auction house you can buy these contracts for significantly cheaper especially first few weeks of the game where you're going to get them for around 150 or 200 if you ever run out of contracts definitely buy them from the auction house first but if you want to spend some real money without wasting coins i guess you can buy that pack instead the pack's really only there to keep the prices of contracts around 400 because last year they were going up to like 700 800 and no one really wants to pay that for a contract it really screwed over those people who uh play the game for free you also have healing cards in case your players ever get any kind of boo-boos and uh these should be out there all the time they're all the same healing cards so there's no more like legs or torso healing cards where one would be more expensive than the other they should be pretty cheap Moving on from contracts and healing items, we have the players in the auction house. Now, every like two or three games, you guys should be upgrading your bronze and silver cards to these gold cards. 80 overall is fine to start. At the beginning of the game, right now, as you see, they're pretty expensive at 2,500, may or may not be worth it, but later on, they should be significantly cheaper, and you should be running with a squad of at least around 80 overall before you play the online guys in online seasons. In case I didn't drill this enough yet, if you're a free-to-play player, never buy packs with coins. Buy the cards that you want from the auction house so you aren't left disappointed unless the player sucks. Well, then maybe it's your fault. I don't know if we're choosing that player. On the flip side, if you do pull a really good card, don't just throw them up for a random price. Go to the collection, find that card, click search auction house and see the prices of that card that people are selling him for and try to sell it for a similar price a lot of people put up like a crosby for 10k it turns out he's worth 200k that's not the actual prices right now but that's just an example next thing that i want to talk about are sets the sets that will benefit you the most if you're just getting into hut and they're under these trade-in sets if you're opening up a bunch of bronze or silver packs you'll get a lot of bronze players and silver players here you can turn five of those of the same rarity into a person of the next higher rarity so here's an example gold comments to gold rares this is going to be probably the one you do the most i'm going to put five people in there really quick to give you an idea of the type of card that you get from this now the card that you get is going to be untradeable you can't sell that card but it is a great help from the start because you can put that guy right in your roster and he'll certainly help you dominate games all you need to do then is go into unopened packs by pressing rt or r2 open up this pack and see what's inside Brock Besser, 82 overall, solid pull, considering I just put in a bunch of uh, high 70s in there. We're certainly going to add him to the lineup. After this, you have the gold rares reroll, where you put in two gold rare players, and you can get another one back. This is really good if you already have two untradeable gold rares. You might as well do this. It took me a while to find some people to give up, but we finally got Ericsson and Little see what we get out of it these sets have a cooldown but if you do them as much as possible they'll again contribute to those milestones where you can get like a 90 overall legend at the end of it here we're only going to get an adam henrique not great so he's probably going to go into the reroll tomorrow when we get the chance in the sets area of hockey ultimate team you may have noticed legend sets and those legend sets will involve collectibles this is one way of getting those collectibles the other way is to buy packs or again just buy them off the auction house if you're a diehard hockey fan you really want to get those players these are the sets for you this is another important set you can turn five gold rare players into a gold collectible and then you can sell this collectible for maybe around 10k the price is going to change over time so check the price of that before you do this another important set is this starter loan set whenever you're done with your loan cards the joe thornton and the nasland you can turn them in for a silver pack i would recommend you guys waiting until there's one game left and then throw them in there which i believe they give you one tip card to start off you can throw that into the first set to complete it that will count towards an objective that you may have then you open up the reward from that set and you put all the other tip collectibles in here which will give you a whole bunch of different consumables like contracts healing items and then some player items to go along with it as well you're also free to read those tips if you think that they will benefit you but we're gonna move on if you go to your lineup you may notice these gray or green diamonds 
and they are synergies. When you activate them, when they're green, you get bonus points to those stats for your players. Get as much of them activated as you can so that your players will feel like they're a lot higher than your overall. There are also coaches that contribute to those synergies, so make sure you have a coach as well and a bronze goalie for the three synergy points. You find out more about synergies from one of my other videos, the guide to synergies. And I'll tell you guys which synergies are the best and why I feel that way. Right next to edit lines is a place called manage lineups. This is important. If you go over to strategies, these are strategies that you can save so that your AIs are a lot more reactive and they're a lot more smarter. These are the settings that I'm using right now, but I'm still playing around with them. Stay tuned for a future video where I solidify which settings I use so that you can have a better advantage in the game. The most important thing is to know that they exist and that you don't need to change your strategies all the time whenever you start a new game. If you head on over to this screen in Play Online, there's a place for competitive seasons. Now, you don't even have to be good at the game to take part in this because no matter what your record is, as long as you play the minimum games, which in this case, it's three, you get a reward. So I would highly recommend every time there's a competitive season, you play, you can either try your little heart out or don't try at all. It doesn't matter. But those rewards are very handy. It would be best if you play the competitive seasons and get to a reward that's at least enough for some kind of pack, like a gold pack, even a silver pack will work, honestly, so that you're rewarded with something for your effort and you have the chance of getting a really good card out of these packs. It's not just getting coins after coins after coins and looking for something to spend those coins with. It's just a random chance that you could get someone really amazing. Hut Champions, similar idea there, but you you need to qualify for it by winning the division one title or taking part in the qualifier rounds of competitive seasons but that has even better rewards so again just do those as much as you can and reap the rewards hopefully this video has been a huge help to you guys but if it hasn't Feel free to leave me a comment below with any kind of questions or concerns that you may have and I would be happy to answer and reply and help you as much as I can. This place is the best channel to get help with your addiction. I may help feed your addiction too. Oh well, the point is I'm helping. So with that, take care guys and I'll see you in another video.